Hallelujah. Oh, I am glad today I know who Jesus is. Amen. And I thank God every day that he chose to allow me to experience the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus said to Simon Peter, flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. In order to know who Jesus Christ is in truth, not just in order to know who he is from your own understanding, your own fleshly understanding, but to know who he is in truth requires a revelation from God Almighty in heaven. And many people read the word of God, they see the evidence, they understand the doctrine, but they don't accept the truth because they have not received the revelation from God, one God in Christ, and Jesus is his name. Amen. Jesus meaning Jehovah is salvation. That's what the name Jesus means. The Word of God tells us the angel declared to Mary, His name shall be called Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. In the book of Isaiah, a prophecy concerning the coming Messiah, the Christ, declared His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Jehovah God manifested in human form for the sole purpose of becoming our salvation, becoming our Savior. Amen. And if you don't have that revelation and that understanding, just ask the Lord about it. And I promise you, He'll find a way to make that known to you in such a manner that you will never again question or doubt. Amen. God has a way of opening our eyes. This little Trinitarian Pentecostal boy grew up in a movement that told me that Jesus Christ was number two out of three. And it took me many years. I knew about the controversy. I knew about the difference in doctrine between the oneness apostolic Pentecostal position and the Trinitarian position. And uh, I researched it, oh, I'll tell you, years and years. I read all kind of material, and I grew up in the Trinitarian movement, so of course, that's what I believed. That's what it was. God's three people. And it wasn't until many years later I was about 20, I guess, about 20 years old or 21 years old. And uh, finally one day I sat down at my dining room table and I was attending an apostolic church. The Holy Ghost told me to go to this church, so I did. And I just, the pastor did not preach on the oneness of God very often, to be honest, that to this day that kind of confounds me. He never preached on it, never talked about it. I would try to debate him, and he'd look at me and say, you'll get it one day, brother, you'll get it. That's all he'd say, and I was so aggravated with him. Oh, I was so mad with him, because, you know, I could debate it up one side, down the other. I knew every assembly of God, Trinitarian argument you ever could manufacture. I knew them all. Finally, one night I went home, and for some reason, I, I just had a burning desire in my spirit, and I said, Lord, I want to know the truth about this. And, you know, it's, it, you can't, two positions can't be right, and two positions can't be wrong. One of them's got to be right, and the other one's got to be wrong. And I said, I want to know. I want to know tonight. Are you one or are you three? And the Holy Ghost spoke to my heart and said, lay your Bible down on the table on its, on its spine. spine and let it fall open. So that's what I did, Tommy. I literally put my Bible, 
straight down on the table in front of me. If I can get it here. I put it down on the table in front of me just like this here. And then I let go of it and I let it fall open. It fell open to the book of Isaiah and I looked down. And when I looked down, literally, I didn't, I didn't have to search for nothing. I looked down, it was like, oh, glory. It was like God just put my eyes right on a passage. And that passage said, I am the Lord. That is my name. And beside me there is no God. I am the Lord. And beside me there is God no Savior. And then I reached down and I just took a bunch of pages and moved them. I didn't count pages. I didn't try to, I, I didn't know what I was looking for. I literally just put, and I began to move pages. And as I did, I looked down on the page and a verse that popped up at me, I am the Lord, that is my name, and beside me there is no other. Move a few pages. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Mm -hmm. Move a few more pages. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. For I and my Father are one. And I'm telling you, it just kept happening over. And over and every single time I turned the pages, every single time I looked down and I was seeing a passage that said one, 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 one. And the end of every passage, even in the New Testament, the Word of God said there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, doesn't use the term Son, it says the Word. And the Holy Ghost. And then how does it end? And these three are one. I finally realized after years of looking at it, reading the Word of God, I finally realized it's easy. We have a habit of reading the titles, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We have a habit of reading them as persons or individuals. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, God is a spirit. That's one of the primary truths of God's Word. God is a spirit. So every time you see the word Father, it's referring to God who is a spirit. Every time you see the word Son, it is referring to the Spirit of God manifested in the person of the man, Jesus Christ. Whenever you see the term Holy Ghost, it is referring to the invisible presence and power of Christ in the world and acting on behalf of and with and through the church. And I realized, I said, you know, I think I see something here. Man is comprised of three elements, body, soul, and spirit. God can be manifested as body, soul, and spirit. Body is the Son. Soul is the Father. Spirit is the Holy Ghost. But these three are one. Mm -hmm. If you were to take the Bible said. That the word of God is sharp, it's quick, it's powerful, it's able to divide asunder even the soul and the spirit. So the word of God can separate the soul and the spirit. Now there's not a one of us thinks that the soul and the body are one and the same. We understand the body's one thing, the soul and the spirit are something else. If the word of God can separate and divide the soul from the spirit. Well, if you were to stand my body here, stand my soul here, and stand my spirit here, how many of me would there be? One. Because all three of them are different manifestations of me, but they're still me. 
And I finally realized, I said, well, I get it, God. This isn't so hard to understand. This isn't so tough to understand. God is one. Hallelujah. And we are today a one God, Jesus' name, apostolic, Acts 2.38, preaching, Pentecostal church. And we are not ashamed of our doctrine. We're not ashamed of our position. Our church doesn't grow like many churches in the LGBT community that are one size fits all. It's like, well, we'll just mix and mingle doctrines. We'll just mix and mingle traditions. We'll just mix and mingle practices from different churches and different organizations and faiths. That is not sound doctrine. That's not what the Word of God teaches. There's truth and there's error. There's right and there's wrong. Right. And this church is committed to the one God Jesus name message. Amen. Yes, amen. I want to tell you today real quick. I had somebody write me on, on a email this week and said, Brother, if you do wind up having to move or do something uh, because of Tommy's job situation. Will the ministry continue? And I want to let you know, absolutely, this ministry will continue. Please do not for one second think that this work will end because we change physical addresses. No, that is not the case. If it were necessary that we move, if, 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 that we move to another city or another state, we would continue the work from whatever location we're at, and at that location, we would do everything in our power to pull together a local church body to be the anchor for this ministry. Why, you might ask? I'll tell you why. Because I need a church. There's a lot of people out there who want to believe that the church, the physical church, the organized church, is unnecessary. I'm going to tell you something. I was born and raised in the Pentecostal faith, albeit Trinitarian, not oneness, but I was born and raised in the Pentecostal faith. I love the people of God. I love God's people. And they do not have to be perfect, Tommy, for me to love them. I've known a lot of wonderful Christian people. They were imperfect. Sometimes they said hurtful things. Sometimes they said things that were offensive, you know. Uh, but I know that as believers, they were not malicious. They were not mean. They were not trying to be mean-spirited. Sometimes they would say things out of sheer ignorance, you know. Something would slip. We all do that sometimes, you know. And uh, I love God's people. And I'm going to tell you something. The Word of God said not to, not to avoid the assembling of ourselves together, as is the custom of some. And the Word of God said, even the more as you see the day approaching. We need God's church, and we need one another, and we need God's people more the later in time it gets, the closer to the coming of the Lord it gets, the more we need the church. Mm -hmm. I need a church. Say, well, you just want to be pastor of a bunch of people. No, 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 no. No. I need a church. I need to be surrounded by people that love the Lord as much as I do. I need to be surrounded by people who know how to worship. I need to be surrounded by people who know how to pray. I need to be surrounded by people who encourage me to keep the faith and who encourage me to do right and live right and act right, who encourage me to be a witness and a testimony, who support what we're trying to do so we can bring the gospel to the lost. Amen. Mm -hmm. I need a church. And I'm going to tell you, these many years that I've been doing affirming ministry, <clears throat> I've never quite felt like we had a church. I mean, we had some people here and there, but 
I've never felt like we really had a church. For one thing, every church I pastored in the mainstream, people honored and respected their pastor. I'm going to tell you a little secret. In LGBT circles, that is not the case. People are very disrespectful. People are very quick to judge the pastor and to, you know, uh, jump ship over the stupidest, most idiotic little things that come along. I never experienced that in the mainstream, Tommy. Never happened. I had things happen between myself and members in the mainstream that made things that happen in our affirming work look like doodle, you know, look like nothing. I had a couple in my first church that turned on me at one point. They were going through some financial difficulties of their own. And they turned on the pastor and they accused me of, of doing some things. And the state overseer of the Church of God had to come down and have a church meeting, you know. And they voted and he asked the congregation, how many people here believe the pastor's done this, you know, thing? And the only people raised their hand in the entire congregation, and we had about 50 or so in that business meeting, were this couple. They're the only so. So they were alone in, in thinking this way, and they, and they were wrong, I'm going to tell you right now. But anyway, did we turn on each other? Did I hate them because they made? No, no. They continued in our church. I continued being their pastor. We went right back to things because if you handle things the way you're supposed to handle them, then you're able to move on, you know. No hard feelings. The Word of God teaches me to forgive. So I can't hold hard feelings. If I hold hard feelings or if I hold a grudge, when you've repented or you've asked for forgiveness, what have you, then I'm in the wrong. So I can't afford that luxury of holding, you know. I didn't have any bad feelings toward them. I understood what they were going through. I understood there was a little transference going on, you know, and I understood that. There are things that have happened with people in our church, and I've told Tommy, I said, I understand what's going on, haven't I? You know, we've had people get all ticked off of the pastor, and I've said to him, I said, this person is going through some stuff, and you know, and, and now he's kind of heaping it on me because he, he, doesn't, he doesn't have the power to heap it anywhere else. I'm the only person that he can kind of take out his frustrations on, you know. And I understand that. The only difference is, since I've been in a Fermi ministry, people don't know how to do right and act right so we can get past it and move on. Instead, they jump ship. Instead, they leave. Well, Long story short, this ministry will continue. And I want to tell you just before I go into the message today, the Spirit of the Lord's laid on my heart. We're going to do something very soon that's different. Our ministry has been very much an online ministry now for many years. Within the next week or so, I hope to have, as part of our website, we're going to have a link you can go to and an application you can fill out. Anyone who wants to be a member of Grace Oasis, the one church in Christ Jesus, wherever you may live around the world, doesn't matter. We're going to give you an opportunity. Since our ministry is so much online anyway, we're going to give you an opportunity to formally and officially become a member of our church if you want to be a member of our church. That's great. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's great. I said, hey, if we're going to be an online church, then we might as well be an online church. Amen. Amen. So we're going to have a little application you can fill out, so we'll have your information. And uh, we just encourage people, if you want to be a member of the church, then you need to act like a church member. What I mean by that is pray for the pastor, pray for the church, support it with your attendance, you know. Now, that doesn't mean you have to watch every service live. You can watch them, you know, uh, recorded, whatever. But be faithful to what we're doing. And if you're able, and if you have the faith and obedience to tithe, tithe, 
uh, give offerings, whatever you're able to do to help the ministry substantively, you'll be welcome to do that as well, okay? So we're going to put that into motion in the very near future. So all of you out there who have said to me, I wish I lived in Dallas so I could be a part of your church. Well, now you can be a part of our church even if you don't live in Dallas. Amen. That's great.